How's it going out there, YouTube? My name is Jesse, and I am back for another Golden Age Spotlight video. Before I start this review, I just want to let you know that the month of August is just around the corner, depending on when you're watching this video. For the entire month of August, I am going to do MLJ comic book characters. I've already done a couple, and I have mentioned several others, so I'm going to spend the entire month of August reviewing as many as I can get. Now I have the list of who I want to do, and you'll know some of them because I've mentioned them. But if there is any MLJ characters that you're interested in seeing, I'd like you to let me know so I can fit them into the month of August with some of the other ones that I am planning on doing. And you can help direct on how the month of August is going to go. So if you have any MLJ characters that you're interested in seeing, or maybe that you've just recently become interested in, just leave me a comment in the comment section and I'll do my best to make sure that they get included in the month of August along with all the other characters that I'll be doing. And I'm really looking forward to this. There's a lot of characters that have a lot of history. So I'm excited about this. And if you want to be a part of it, you can Tell me who you want to see, and I'll make sure that I give you a shout-out when I do that particular hero. Even if you name one that I'm already planning on, I'll still give you that shout-out. So, that being said, the month of August, let me know if you want to be a part of it too. And let's go ahead and get into this Golden Age Spotlight video. This one's going to be a little different. I am actually going to be reviewing Fawcett comic books. Fawcett Publications actually started a long time before Fawcett comic books even got started. But we're going to cover the comic books. We're going to go over some of the titles that they produced, some of the characters that came out of the comics, what ultimately led to the end of Fawcett comics, and where some of their comics have gone. Now, the future of some of these characters are mostly part of DC, so if you're going to want to see the future of the characters, you know, get into the DC comic books, but I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you know where they came from and where they went. So, let's get started. Fawcett Publications originally began in 1919 with the magazine Captain Billy Whiz Bang. This was a line of periodicals that they would produce. In the 1930s and in the early 1940s, the comic book industry started to come around and Fawcett Publications decided to take their hand into the comic books. With this, the um, Fawcett Publications would create many heroes that you might even know today, such as Bullet Man and Bullet Girl, Spy Smasher, Captain Midnight, Mr. Scarlet and Pinky, and of course their most famous superhero, Captain Marvel. One of the interesting things about Fawcett Comics is all of their superheroes first appeared in Wiz Comics number two, and the reason for that is Bill Parker and C.C. Beck, who created the first Fawcett Comics, made a comic called Thrill Comics Number 1. Now this was an ash can copy, and what an ash can thing is, is usually an ash can is referred to films where you make a film to preserve the rights of the characters that you own, but it was never meant to see the light of day, which was mainly what this, co this comic was. It was something to give them an idea of how they wanted to have the comic books go onto the shelves. The first Captain Marvel name was actually Captain Thunder. So when they reworked the comic, it came out as Wiz Comics number two in 1940, which I don't understand why they couldn't call it Wiz Comics number one. The very first thing they came out with was Thrill Comics. and. It wasn't even something that was supposed to reach yourselves, but there you go. Wiz Comics number two, which is where a lot of the heroes that you know nowadays actually debuted. There were a number of artists and writers 
who were a part of Fawcett Publications at the time. I'm not going to name all of them, but I'm going to name some of them. Some of them you may have heard of, or you may actually know. David Berg, Jack Binder, Alex Blum, Charles Nichols, Jack Spaulding, even Jack Kirby and Joe Simon. They were all parts of Fawcett, and there's many more, much more than I can even uh, begin to even name. Now, Fawcett Publications didn't limit themselves to just superhero comic books. They put out a number of other types of comics, such as haunted stories, strange and suspense stories, romance, and western stories. They would also get into stories that covered other things, such as like A Jungle Girl was one of their comics. But there would be something that would lead to the end of Fawcett Publications. Now, Captain Marvel and the Marvel family was the head honcho of Fawcett Comics. They were one of the most popular superheroes at the time, and they were even outselling the Superman comic books. National Comics, which would later be known as DC, sued Fawcett, saying that Captain Marvel infringed on Superman's copyright, saying that it was the exact superhero. Now, the basis of Captain Marvel being Superman did not hold up in court because their powers were different enough that it didn't look like the same person. So, they sued them on another route. What happened is, in 1941, Superman was in the newspaper, uh, a newspaper syndication, and they didn't follow the copyright procedures properly, so a lot of people started making their Superman clones back then. None of the other Superman clones were ever as popular as Superman, so they never pursued legal actions against them. They did do that against Superman. Now, the fact that Captain Marvel was not a Superman clone did not hold up, but what they saw was some of the Captain Marvel stories were copied from Superman stories. Now, that in and of itself would not be enough to make them have to stop, but since the judge ruled that they did not mean to improperly put the copyright on the Superman's newspaper publications, they didn't mean to skip the copyright, that they were going to uphold it. So Captain Marvel and the Marvel family would have to stop making the Captain Marvel comic books because it did violate the copyright laws. In 1953, Fawcett Comics stopped printing all of their superhero comics. There was a number of non-superhero things that Fawcett did continue to keep publishing, such as Dennis the Menace, which they were doing heavily in the 1960s. A number of their comic books would be sold off to Charleston comic books, and I'll cover which one those are. An interesting thing, in 1967, Marvel gained the trademark of Captain Marvel, which when DC would finally get the rights to Captain Marvel, they would have to name him Shazam because they didn't legally own the Captain Marvel name and they wouldn't be able to use it for their character. Now Fawcett would put out many titles. Some of them are the ones that they that they ended when the uh, with the copyright. America's Greatest Comics. Captain Midnight, Golden Arrow, Master Comics, Captain Marvel Comics, and WoW Comics. Now, the stories that would go on to Charleston Comics were mainly their Western stories and some of their romance stories. Now, Fawcett did do Don Wilson of the Navy, which went on to Co Fawcett Comic, or which went on to Charleston. Uh, Fawcett's Funniest Animals went on to Fawcett Comics. Now, there was something called Gene Archery Comics. That went on to Dell Comics, which will probably be something I want to do in the future. Hopalong Cassidy also went on to Charleston Comics, along with 
lost lore and western There's a lot of stuff to cover that I would actually like to go over more and like I said a lot of their westerns and some of their romance stories and their suspense stories like strange suspense stories would also go on the Charleston comics there's, there's, there's just a lot of stuff involved in that a number of Fawcett comic characters would go on to DC Comics, such as Captain Marvel, Ibis the Invincible, Bullet Man and Bullet Girl, Mis Mr. Pinky, and I've actually covered a number of characters from Fawcett that would move on to DC. Not all of their characters would move on, and some of them would slip into the public domain. Um, DC doesn't use the characters quite as much as they could, but I know that they've had a number of appearances in the comic books over the years, and some of them have been reworked after the Infinite Crisis storyline. And that is the history of Fawcett Comics. If I, I'm assuming that if Captain Marvel wasn't more popular than Superman, and we didn't have the declining market of superheroes in 1953, which would have a resurgence in the 60s, it's possible that Fawcett might be around today as a contender to DC and Marvel. I don't believe that Fawcett is still putting out anything nowadays. But that is the tale of where they started, who was a part of it, some of the things that they have uh, put out, and where they went. Now, I would just like to mention this as an aside Fawcett also did put out movie comics it was comic book based on movies now these were movies from the late 1940s and the early 50s I'm I'm not even familiar with some of these movies that's how old they are uh, if, if anybody would like to know what these movies are I could do a little side thing on that, but I don't think anybody watching this would even recognize any of these movie names. Well, I hope you liked this video. I hope that it uh, informed you about things that you may not have known before. I will be doing more Fawcett characters in the future, but probably after the month of August in the MLJ month. So, put in those requests if, you, if there's a hero you want to see, because if you don't tell me, I might not get to them month that only lasts for so long. So until next time, I'll be seeing you.